Remember, the four horsemen predict divorce 93%. You want to keep these three, four things out of your marriage. This comes from the research by John Gottman. Number two is contempt. Showing contempt for your partner. What is contempt? Gottman says, contempt is acting as though your partner is beneath you and not worth your time. It's disregarding someone else's thoughts and opinions and actively displaying scorn to them. Now, real quickly here, contempt is different than anger. In other words, if you and I are angry at each other, even though we're angry at each other, it at an unconscious level, we actually see each other as equals. Contempt is more insidious than that because what contempt does, it actually says, I'm morally superior to you. I'm better than you are. You're beneath me. And that is why contempt is so insidious. What are some what does contempt look like? All right. It's attacking your partner's sense of self with the intention to insult or psychically abuse them. You can do this by insults, name calling. You're fat. You're stupid. You're this. You're that. Showing contempt. Hostile humor. Sarcasm is a form of contempt. Mocking your partner is a form of contempt. Your body language and tone of voice, how does that? When you roll your eyes at someone, purse your lips at them, all of that is demeaning. It's showing contempt for your partner. You see, when you do those things, you're damaging the relationship. Now, these are seven behaviors that indicate contempt, all right? So let me give you these real quick. When you're constantly ignoring and neglecting your partner, when you're not regulating your tone and your body language. And this is another form of contempt. When you intentionally neglect emotional intimacy. When you're being unappreciative and unaccepting of your partner. When you communicate in a way that tears your partner down and belittles them. Here's another form of contempt. When you start taking your partner for granted. When you're complacent about them. When you're just complacent and take them for granted. And here's another form of contempt. When you intentionally don't take responsibility for your own actions, your own choices, and you push it off on them. All of these are behaviors that indicate contempt in the relationship. Long term, what are the effects of showing contempt on your spouse? You ready? They're going to feel unworthy. They're going to feel inferior. And they're going to feel un unacceptable. Early in my marriage, Luella was at a church that taught if you're a, quote, good Christian man, whatever that really means, I don't know. But if you're one of those and a good Christian husband, then there's a checklist you have to let, re, get, go by. Got to wear a suit. You got to be in church every time the doors are open. You have to do this. I mean, there's all these. I didn't fit that, right? And because I didn't fit that definition, Luella held me in little regard spiritually used to criticize how I was, held me to some standard. I'm not going to be that person. Why? I don't necessarily agree that that defines who I am in my faith or as a person. You see, in, in the early years of marriage, it created a lot of conflict because she was critical of who I was because she wasn't accepting of who I was. Because I grew up in a broken home with a lot of abuse and craziness, I had a poor self-esteem anyways. I lived in fear of rejection and abandonment. So in those early days, I wasn't mature enough. So I, I tried to be the checklist and it just didn't work because I figured if I can be the sec checklist, then she'll love me and accept me, you see. But the problem is I would never, ever become that. Next, your partner over time will become angry and resentful towards you. They will become angry and resentful towards you. Why? Because what's the message of contempt? You're not good enough. You're inferior. I'm better than you. Why can't you be like everybody else? Why do you have to be you? I was one of the messages I always got growing up in my home. Was, Why can't you be like everybody else? Because I don't want to be everybody else. I want to be me. You know, I got to be me. I know I'm a terrible singer. Next, the effects of contempt on your partner. They believe that as long as they live with you, they will live with rejection, pain, and eventually abandonment. That's it. The longer that I live with you, I'm going to live in fear, rejection, pain, and abandonment. That was me in the early years of our marriage before we both kind of grew up and became healthy, mature adults. And we created a very healthy, loving us marriage. We have a strong sense of us today. It's 37 years of marriage. I love my marriage. She's my best friend in the world. In the early years, because we were both wounded and broken and come from broken homes, I always felt that, you know, if I don't measure up and become what she wants me to become, then she won't love me and she'll reject me and I'll never be good enough. And that was the message she sent. Because she had this sense of being critical and then contemptuous when I didn't fulfill what she thought I had to be. Two of the Horsemen of the Apocalypse by John Gottman, Criticism and Contempt. Ready for number three? 